crop wild relatives are the wild species which are closely related to the crops of today. They may be more or less related. They may be many of them within a family or there may be very few. It's a bit like human beings and families really. Uh, that's to say if you look at potatoes, they have an awfully large number of wild relatives, hundreds of them. Whereas if you look at coconut, it's more or less out on its own there without any very close wild relatives. Now, the point about them is that the closely related ones have characteristics which are extremely useful for the crops. Very few people realize quite how important they are. The tomatoes you eat routinely probably contain 10 to 20 genes from crop wild relatives and without them you wouldn't be having the kind of tomatoes you get today both in terms of flavor in terms of disease resistance in terms of resistance to cold frost and drought Crop wild relatives live everywhere. They're just species in a sense like any other species, except often they're not so exciting as other species. They're not a wonderful orchid or a most beautiful and ancient tree. They're just the species that you see around. Often they're weeds. In fact, many crop wild relatives are quite weedy and part of secondary vegetation. They are often threatened with environmental destruction, with climate change, and with increasing population and land use change. And you can see that these are species which it's really quite important to conserve from the point of view of their future use. Climate change will have a dramatic effect on agriculture. It will move about the world. Different crops will be produced in different places under different environments. We will need more resistance to stress. We will need crops that withstand drier conditions or crops that withstand wetter conditions, depending on the environmental change brought on by climate change. And where are these characteristics going to come from? Almost certainly a significant number of them will come from crop wild relatives, which are already growing in the kinds of environments where we expect agriculture to have to adapt to. The effective conservation of crop wild relatives is going to take two important kinds of collaboration within a country between the environmental people and the agricultural people. Environmental people often don't think crop wild relatives are very important. They're not part of their natural resources and natural environment protection strategy. They're ephemeral, uninteresting species compared with lions, tigers, pandas. They're also not part of the reasons why you might set up a protected area. At the same time, agricultural people don't have the kind of access to land and decision-making power that enables them to conserve material. The second important collaboration is collaboration between countries. No country is entirely self-sufficient for the resources it needs to produce varieties and produce crops and for its agriculture. And often the crop wild relatives it needs will be found in other countries. A classic example which we know well is that of Uzbekistan with a major interest in cotton production. While the wild relatives of cotton are all found somewhere a long way away from Uzbekistan. So its interest is in other countries conserving the crop wild relatives of cotton. And that story is repeated over and over again around the world.